Documentation. You love it or you hate it. You love it when you need it and you hate it when you have to make it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do professional grade API documentation for C++ code using a tool called Doxygen, which is going to generate all of our documentation for us and all we have to do is comment our code like we normally would. So what we're going to wind up with at the end of this video is something that looks like this. We're going to have a brief little main page with uh, kind of a landing spot. This is referencing a markdown file, a readme that I have in GitHub. So if you look at my GitHub, this project uh, consists of multiple folders, uh, including readmes and some general uh, build instructions. So I'm going to show you how to take this and generate something like this. So here we can see this is a uh, local website or local HTML file that's being hosted. Uh, it's going to give me this main page right here. It's going to show the project name right now. It's just called my project. Uh, I can see a bunch of class lists, so I can see some of the classes I've since documented. So I can see in my code I have this detected frame class, and you can see it's got an OpenCV matrix, uh, a couple vectors, and then another uh, OpenCV matrix. I can also go to file list, and I can get kind of a rundown of all the files that I have in this repo or this project. And more importantly, if I go in and click on one, it's going to show uh, an inheritance graph. So it's going to show, hey, You've got uh, this file points to this helpers.h file, and then that file itself points to all these. So it's kind of a dependency graph. This is really useful for making sure your dependencies are squared away. You're also going to have documentation on any function that you've uh, commented on. So here, if I click on the generate points clouds, I can see right here I've got a function to create real sense point cloud from dev data. So this is a pretty bad description of it, but we're going to show you how to fill that out a little better. You can see it also lists out the variables that exist in this file, and then this also has a nice little search function. So if I look up, let's say, map, it's going to pull up my CVP file. More importantly, let's say create logger. So if I go home, I want to look for the create logger function. It's going to quickly find that in mapcb and take me right to it. So obviously I have a pretty terrible documentation of this function um, because there is none. But let's go ahead and jump into the code and see how we actually generate this and populate it a little more than we have right now. All right, so here's my repo, and as you can see, it's kind of a pretty simple uh, project. It just has a couple folders. Um, I've got basically a slam folder. What this project is is doing orb slam with uh, computer vision and uh, point clouds and trying to make a uh, mapping of a room. So I've got an include folder with got my helpers and uh, just basic header files, and this code's in pretty rough shape. This was kind of a hobby project that never really got the attention it needed. Uh, I've got a map folder, which has itself uh, a separate CMake and then actual CVP. And then I've got a source folder with uh, all my actual files and for some reason an HPP file that probably shouldn't be in there. And the uh, main thing we're going to look at is this orb CVP file. I also have a test folder for doing some unit tests and then just general uh, root of the repo stuff like the readme right here. So the first thing I want to do for Doxygen is I need to install it. So what you're going to run is sudo, if you're on your Ubuntu, sudo app install function. Very, very easy. See if I type my password in wrong. Yep. And I already have it installed, so it's not going to install anything. Um, but those would be the steps for you. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to the root of the directory. So I'm right here. I'm in my orb slam repo. And I want to make a docs folder. So this is where we're going to keep all of our HTML, our LaTeX, our PDF, all the stuff that gets generated. So I'm just going to make a docs folder. I go into docs folder. And now I need to generate something called a doxy file. So uh, the doxy file is what tells Doxygen your configuration. So it says, okay, what's your project name? What are the files you want to include? Do you want to generate HTML? Do you want to generate LaTeX? Do you want to generate PDFs? It's your one-stop shop for configuring all of the things that Doxygen can do. And we're by no means going to cover everything in this video. Uh, Doxygen is a massive tool with a lot of capabilities. But just basic, get some documentation going. Uh, we're going to do that right now. So what you want to do is you want to Doxygen dash G. And if you just enter, it's going to generate a default doxy file. Right there, doxy file. So let's go into code and let's actually take a look at this. So I'm going to go to docs, doxy file. If I go to the very top, there's a few things we're going to need to do to configure this to get it to kind of uh, work for what we want to do here and work with our repo structure. First thing I want to do is give it a name. So I'm going to name this something like orb slam project. 
object. Cool. Uh, I can give it a version number, so maybe version 0, 0.1, 0, 0.0. And actually, I believe that needs to be a string. We'll see. I don't actually remember. You can also add uh, like your company logo, your project logo right here. You just pass it directly to the image. And all these things have pretty good descriptions in and of themselves. Uh, if you just look above, you can pretty much um, understand exactly what's going to happen right away. Uh, output directory, I'm just going to leave that blank because I'm just going to be calling the docsgen generate command from the docs folder. And by default, it will just generate the files uh, at the place you made that call from. Uh, the key thing we want to look at now is we want to go down. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go down to, well, let me just look for recursive right here. So I'm going to scroll up from there. And the first thing we want to look at is input. So input is exactly what you think it would be. It is saying, hey, where do you want me to start looking for files? And so because my docs folder exists one directory up from where my actual code is, the slam folder, I'm going to say, just go one directory up and then go to that directory. Uh, don't need quotes or anything around that, just as simple as that. Next thing you want to do is you can take a look at the file patterns. It's going to say, okay, what kind of files do you want documented um, in this repo? By default, I leave them all because if it's a project that has a combination of say CPP files or C++ or maybe it's got H and HPP, I'm just going to let it cover it all automatically for me. Now this is really important, recursive. Recursive says, hey, I want you to actually not just go to the slam folder, but I want you to look inside of all of these other folders. So go look inside of source, go look inside of include and find anything that has been documented with the adoption style, which we're going to cover in a second. So if you don't have this on, it's pretty much going to say, I'm only going to document whatever's at this root directory, which usually is not what you want. Go ahead and turn that on. Uh, include or exclude, sorry. This is where maybe you would exclude any file you don't want documented. So for me on this repo, I was using Conan to uh, build it, but I don't actually want that um, documented because the way that gets pulled in can sometimes be a little ugly. So I'm just going to give it a path to it, say direct one directory up, and then do not include the Conan file.py, which is right there. Uh, similarly, you can leave that as default, and then the exclude pattern. So this is important, and it's one of the things if you look Google Doxygen getting started, this page right here. Pretty much the first step, so we show we generate the Doxygen doxy file. And then it says, hey, you probably don't want to include your tests. So I literally just pull that right in and I'm going to do that. So I don't get all my unit tests pulled into the uh, actual final documentation because usually you don't want that. Uh, if you do, then just leave this blank. This is also useful, say you wanted to, this would also uh, be where you put something like the build folder if you didn't want to include that in documentation. For now, I have nothing in there that's actually gonna get pulled in. So I'm just gonna leave it with test. So the next thing I want to do is just give this a main page, like a landing page. So if you look at my documentation, it defaults to the markdown readme file, the this guy right here, that's in the base level of the repo. I need to tell Doxygen that I also want that to be the main page for this thing. So what we're going to go down here is we're going to look for use MD file as main page. So I'm just going to give it a path to the readme.md. And at that point, that should be everything we need configured. Now there's a whole bunch of other things you can adjust and edit. You can um, add styling to your HTML. You can actually have default footers and headers and you can do all those things um, right in this file. I encourage you if you're gonna be using Doxygen for work, for your personal projects, for school, take the time and kind of look up a lot of these little variables because chances are there's some really powerful uh, tool in it that you could be capitalizing on. So how do we actually generate the documentation now? Well, let's go back to our docs folder. And all we're going to run is Doxygen. That's going to go through, process all of our files, and generate the HTML and LaTeX, which is the default that I have right now. Hit enter. Boom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to close this, go to the file path. So let's go to the new docs folder. Let's go to HTML. And the first thing you want to do is index HTML. Boom. Look at that. Orb slam v0.1.0. I should be able to go to files, see all my files, classes, see a few classes. Now, one thing I want to point out here is let's take a look. If I look right here and then I pull up my directory side by side, something you're going to notice is, let me close this and that. I have three folders inside of the slam directory and yet I'm only seeing two. Why is that? 
Well, the way Doxygen processes its files, it's actually just looking for a file that has a specific uh, top level doc documentation. So what do I mean by that? Let's open up map and take a look at map CPP. So map CPP is just a regular file, um, but it's missing a Doxygen style top level comment to tell Doxygen, hey, include this file. So the first thing I wanna do before I do that, I'd actually go find an extension in VS Code. So if I look up Doxygen in my extensions section, I'm gonna see this Doxygen documentation generation, or generator, sorry. Go ahead and install this. What this does is makes it so that you can basically automatically generate your documentation and your comments. So if I have that installed, all of a sudden I go up here, go to my first line, hit enter, and now if I set forward slash star star and hit enter, look at that, it auto-populated all this stuff for me. So I can go ahead and fill this out. Let's say, okay, boom, my name is Christian, brief. This file handles the, what does this actually do? I think it handles, yeah, the generation of a slam map file. I'm honestly not sure if that's actually what I had this do. So now default with the date and a copyright. So I'm gonna be happy with that. I'm gonna hit save, close that guy real quick. And now I'm gonna go regen my documentation. So if I hit doxygen again, it's gonna pull that up. Now if I refresh this page, boom, map. And because I have an actual brief example right here, it's gonna list it right there as well. Boom. So now if we look at this page right here, it's gonna say, hey, this CPP file depends on orb.h, which itself depends on all these. And I can tell that I don't have any circular dependencies because no arrows are pointing back, which is really one of the coolest things you can do and more useful things you can do with this kind of graph. So let's go look at some files. If I go to the orb CPP file, so if I take a look at this page, I notice that a few of these functions are actually clickable, but some are not. So let's go take a look at what we need to do to actually document a function in Doxygen. And you can kind of see a hint at some of these as I'm scrolling by. Let's go to one that isn't documented though. Let's look at process bag. So with that extension enabled that we just did, if I go ahead and hit uh, forward slash star star and hit enter, this is gonna do two things. It's gonna pull up a automatic generation of a brief and the parameters that I pass in this function. So it automatically figures out, hey, those were parameters. Let's add some documentation to them. So this function handles the processing of a bag file, which is a pretty bad description, but good enough for this. So this will be the recorded bag file. Processing. And the other parameter would be a global share, which I'm just gonna say shared um, data space. I actually forgot what I did with that variable. And cool, that should be documented. So if I go ahead and regen and pull up here, refresh, say, hey, that was documented. And right here it's gonna say, okay, cool. It's gonna get the brief, the function handles processing a bag file. It's gonna say my parameters are bag file name and share, and it's gonna give the little descriptions that I wrote. That's awesome, so that's working out pretty well. So what do I wanna document a variable? Well, let's go look at this point clouds vector, this guy right here. On line 31. Uh, the way to document those, you can kind of get a hint from the above lines that Doxygen is going to be able to actually pick up on is do a three line comment. So if I hit enter, it's obviously going to automatically do a brief and I can say, this is a vector of point clouds Cool, I think that's what I had that being done as. If I go regenerate and go look over here, refresh. I'm gonna see my variables, I've got this point clouds piece. And if I click on it, it's just gonna take me right to this little section, the same thing I clicked on, it says, this is a vector point cloud, it's for multiple cameras. Awesome. So let's go update this header file too, or this uh, top level comment too, because I don't like how it's showing up. So let's do a question. I want I want a brief. This file handles the combination of Clouds. with uh, orientation, something like that. Go ahead and regen, go back to it, refresh. Look at that, it's just got it filled out right there. So it's really just a nice way of having kind of a top level documentation and a way of documenting your API because 
if someone's coming into your team, your project, and they don't understand all the work that you've already put in, rather than having them walk through every single line of code, you can start here and look at kind of, okay, how does the API flow? What are the functions available? How do the files look? Look at my classes. So if we look at this detected frame class, uh, by default, it's just gonna show up and say, hey, I know these data types and I know what you have written for them, but I've got nothing extra. So if I see, okay, this exists in the orb slam include orb.h file. So let's go over there and let's look at that class. Well, if I look at the class, all it has is this, but it has no actual docsogen comments. So let's help this out a little bit. Let's generate some docs. So this class handles the story of orb features. I mean, let's put an example here. Let's do a three line comment here and let's do, okay, the CV mat for descriptors, which obviously is not a great comment there. But let's go to regen. Refresh that. Boom. So for one, I have my actual little brief documentation right there, um, which is also listed down here. I have a description now for key points as well. So I can click on that and it's just gonna say, hey, this is documented right there. Now there's a lot of formatting you can do to actually clean up these pages and make it so you don't have like redundant stuff there. You can get rid of the generated reduction piece. You can do your own custom file formats. Um, a lot of stuff that you can actually extend beyond this. And obviously something else to point out is all these external links will work as well. So I can point to the LibRealSense repo that a lot of this is referenced off of and things like that. So hopefully that's been useful for a quick little how do you document some C++ code. This has by no means been a uh, full Doxygen tutorial. Uh, it's just meant to really be something that, hey, get you started. It's what I did for pretty much every project when I was in college. And it was just nice to be able to uh, submit my code and also provide a link to uh, this documentation that I uh, hosted on a separate server or on like an S3 bucket and just let my professor have access to that. Or even just print off the PDFs that you generate or the latex. And that way you can actually have a little bit more of, it looks like you did a bunch of documentation and you really filed it out and you made it super professional. When in reality, all you did was document your code to a bare minimum level and let the system do it all for you. So if you like this video, if you thought it was useful at all, please like, subscribe, you know, blah, 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 blah. I gotta do all that for the algorithm. A lot more stuff coming out soon, some robotics projects, some more coding projects, uh, C++ Python. So if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.